Hello friends, welcome to the channel Mechanics of Solids. In this section, we will solve numericals on thermal stresses. For that, we are taking a composite structure. My composite structure consists of a steel tube and a copper rod inside that. So this is the steel tube. Steel tube, it has the dimension outer. It is equal to 30 mm. Inner, it is 20 mm and inside the steel tube there is a copper rod diameter of the copper rod is equal to 15 mm ok fine coefficient of linear expansion of the copper it is given as 18 into 10 power minus 6 per degree celsius and the coefficient of thermal expansion of steel it is given as 7 into 10 raised to minus 6 per degree celsius Elastic modulus of the steel, it is given as 2.1 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square and elastic modulus of copper is given as 1 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square. The length of the copper rod and this steel tube are same. Let it be L original. Original length, steel tube length is equal to length of the copper rod. First of all, we can calculate the area for the steel tube area of the steel tube is equal to pi by 4 into outer dia square 30 square minus 20 square that is equal to 125 pi mm square now we can calculate the area of the copper rod that is equal to pi by 4 into how much it is 15 square we will get 56.25 pi mm square let me check that the value is getting yes fine and now what we need to find is the stresses acting on this copper rod and the steel tube it is said in the question that at a temperature of T1 is equal to 10 degrees Celsius, there is no longitudinal stress. There is no longitudinal stress. At a temperature T2 is equal to 200 degrees Celsius, there is a stress on copper rod and steel tube. So, stress on the copper and stress on the steel that we need to find out. And its nature or behavior, tensile or compressive, that also we need to calculate ok fine so this is our question calculate the stress on the copper and the steel for term, obtaining the thermal stresses we are fixing the top and the bottom faces ok now I can say that compressive load compressive load on copper is equal to tensile load on steel. How can I say that? Since it is a composite structure, we know that whatever be the load on the steel tube should be equal to the load on copper rod. Okay, fine. But I said that compressive load on copper. How I got that? By looking into the thermal expansion value coefficient of linear expansion of copper is greater than that of the steel that means that more elongation will occur to copper as compared to steel that means that compressive stress will act on the copper rod that's why I said that compressive load on the copper should be equal to tensile load on the steel if there is a compressive load on copper automatically there will be tensile load on the steel what is load? stress multiplied by area you can say that sigma of the copper into area of the copper is equal to sigma of the steel into area of the steel okay fine sigma of the copper is into area of the copper that is 56.25 pi is equal to sigma of the steel into 125 pi that is sigma c is equal to 125 pi by 56.25 pi that is 2.22 sigma s. Now I got a relation between sigma c and sigma s. 
I can keep that relation here. I am writing it here. Sigma C is equal to 2.22 sigma S. Okay, fine. So, this is my first inference by looking into linear expansion of copper and linear expansion of steel. And now I got another inference by looking into the linear expansion of copper and steel that I will write it now. That I will write now. I can say that the total expansion, whatever it may be, the total expansion happening to the steel tube should be equal to the copper rod since it is a composite structure. So I can say that expansion, net expansion, net expansion in steel should be equal to net expansion in copper. Okay, first I will find out the expansion in steel. Expansion in steel. I will find it now. Expansion in steel is equal to free expansion on heating. Free expansion on heating. I am writing plus or minus. I will select one now. Minus expansion on tensile stress or compressive stress that I need to check. Here linear expansion value is more for copper therefore compressive stress will act here. Here steel therefore tensile stress will generate there. Under tensile stress elongation positive value will be getting. Therefore I can write plus value here plus expansion on expansion by the tensile stress expansion by tensile stress. This is my inference. Now expansion in copper is equal to free expansion on heating plus minus. What is that? It, whether it is contraction or uh, expansion that I need to find out. In copper as I said compressive stress is acting therefore contraction. Effect of contraction will be there. Therefore I am writing minus compressive sorry contraction minus contraction or shortening contraction by compressive stress okay as I said expansion of steel is equal to net expansion into copper I can equate these two equating these two I can write free expansion on heating well, before that I, I will write expansion in steel one more time expansion in steel is equal to free expansion in heating means we have delta L by L naught is equal to alpha delta T this is the main equation that we have learned if you are not getting these things you must go to the first video on thermal stresses now delta L is equal to alpha delta T into L naught I am writing alpha of the steel into delta T into L naught plus expansion by the tensile stress we have Young's modulus E is equal to stress divided by strain or strain is equal to sigma divided by E strain is equal to delta L by L is equal to sigma divided by E or delta L is equal to sigma into L naught original length divided by E therefore I am writing sigma of the steel into L naught divided by E of the steel E of the steel okay fine Similarly, I can write net expansion in copper is equal to alpha of the copper into delta T into L naught minus stress on the copper into L naught divided by elasticity of the copper. Now I am equating according through this inference. I can equate this. While equating, there are common terms L0, 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 L0 here. So cancel this L0 throughout. But now we have sigma C is equal to 2.2 sigma S that I can substitute here. I can write alpha S. Instead of alpha S, I can write 11 into 10 power minus 6. 11 into 10 power minus 6 into delta T. That is how much is delta T? T2 minus T1. That is 190. 190 plus 
sigma s divided by how much is the steel elasticity value it is given 2.1 into 10 power 5 2.1 into 10 power 5 is equal to alpha of the copper 18 into 10 power minus 6 okay into 190 minus minus here it is plus it is minus here sigma c it is 2.22 sigma s 2.22 sigma s divided by elasticity of the copper 1 into 10 raised to 5 on solving this we will get the value of sigma s first sigma s we will get it as 87.2 87.2 newton per mm square and the sigma copper we will get it as 191.84 191.84 newton per mm square now this is how we solve this problem this is very important this is very important this inference is very very important load on the steel should be equal to the load on the copper that is the first inference second inference is expansion on the steel is equal to net expansion in the copper these are the two inferences and using these two inferences we solve this problem this is a very good question and there is a chance for asking the questions from the composite structures and from the thermal uh, composite structures included in thermal stress okay thank you this is how we can solve the problem thank you